Good morning, Life Church family. It is good to be in the house of the Lord today. Stand up and worship with us this morning. Things in your name. 
beneath the surface of my anxious imagination beckons a calmness that is found in you alone it washes over every doubt every imperfection jesus your presence is the comfort of my soul there's nowhere i'd rather be when you're singing over me i just wanna be here with you i'm lost in your mystery i'm found in your love for me i just wanna be here with you here in the
worship as we sing this song.
righteous shall live by faith. This is faith walk, isn't it? We, we don't see it. A lot of times we don't feel it. The righteous shall live by faith. By faith. Faith is the most powerful commodity in heaven. The righteous shall live by faith. I pray that this morning that your faith is strengthened. That you are strengthened in your faith. He's a way maker. Miracle worker. Pro- keeps every promise. Come on. Amen. Amen. Give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Would you? We love you, Lord. Amen. <laughs> Smile real big. Fist bump the person next to you. Tell them, welcome to church. I'm glad you're here with me. Good morning. So good to see you. Welcome. <laughs> well, you survived the blizzard of 2022. You made it. Come on, you made it. <laughs> You didn't, you didn't, you made it, right on. So glad you're here. Hey, welcome. If you're watching at home, uh, either on our YouTube channel, maybe uh, a Facebook Live, hey, welcome to our worship service on the, uh, this Sunday morning. We're so glad you're here. My name's Tim. I'm the pastor. I haven't met you yet, and, and we're glad you're here. And our hope this morning was that when you came, that you felt loved and welcome. And even though, even those watching online, we want you to feel loved and welcome. As a matter of fact, uh, why don't we, on the count of three, I don't know if they could hear us, Dana, if we could pump up a mic or whatever. On the count of three, could you just give a big shout out, a hand clap to those who are watching online, would you? One, two, three, here we go. Yeah. Glad that you're here, so welcome. Hey, we're going to invite you to grab a connection card. It looks just like this. Now, if you're at home, uh, know that you can go to our church app or a website and, and fill out a connection card. Here's the purpose of it. We want to connect with you, and we think uh, whatever you're going through is important enough for us to pray about. So we want to be praying with you. So take a moment, grab the pen, uh, the seat back in front of you, put your name and check the box that says first time guest if you're a guest. Uh, second time, you can indicate that. Third time, there's a place for that. After three, we say regular tender, so we're glad that you're here. Take a few moments to fill that out. On the back of the card, there's a place for prayer requests. Now this is super important to us because we want to be praying with you. So if you're at home, the way you'll let us know how to pray is you'll let us know how to pray. You can fill out a connection card uh, on our app or website. We want to be praying with you. We meet throughout the week several times, and we're going to be lifting you up. You have a promise that if you'll write it down, we'll be praying with you. And then also, at the end of the service, you can drop these off with the ushers as you uh, worship God with your tithe and offering. Now, if you're a guest, we don't have any expectation for you to give today. Of course, you're welcome to participate in that, but that's the time, time, time of the service that we set aside to worship God with our giving, and so you can participate in that several ways. You can check out the screen behind me. At home, you'll see that as well. You can log on right now to our app or website and give digitally. We try to make it as convenient as possible, but we don't want you to miss the, the worship and the joy of giving today. So as you leave, you can drop these off with our ushers uh, along with your tithe and offering and if you're a guest stop by our welcome center if you're maybe new and you haven't been stop by on the way out us on the left we'd love to connect with you and just give you something to say we love you so can we give our first time guests a warm life church welcome this morning come on yeah we love you very much and appreciate you and so glad that you're here I want to point out one thing on the connection card that I want everyone to look at with me. So grab it real quick. I just want to point something out to you. On the back of the card, you'll see the category that says, my next step today is, everyone got that? Take a look at it real quick. You'll see four boxes. The fourth box is, sign me up. I want to volunteer for Spring Spruce Up Day on uh, April the 9th. On Saturday, that's actually a Saturday, uh, April the 9th. From 8 to 12, we'll meet here and just have a church spring spruce up day. So if you're an outside person, I'm with you, man. I, I, I mean, we're together. <laughs> we got stuff. We got mulch and pine straw and all kinds of things we can do outside. If you're an inside person, there's plenty to do. And if you are specially gifted and talented in a, um, how do you say it? Um, usable skill set. <laughs> now, management, administration, and bossing people around is not considered a usable skill set 
in this case. <laughs> but maybe you're a carpenter, maybe you're good at woodwork, or maybe you're mason, masonry work, and maybe you're electrical or a plumber or sheetrock uh, guy or girl painter or whatever. If you'll let us know, we'll, you know, try to utilize your skill as best we can. Or maybe you're kind of like me, maybe a jack of all trades, a master of none. But I can, I can help, right? So just check the box, put your name down so we'll know it's you and we want to kind of, uh, lunch will be provided that day. Lunch is provided that day, so you don't want to miss. I'm going to ask Pastor Kevin if he'll come join me on the platform right now. He's got a special, just kind of a celebration about what God's been doing in our kids' ministry over the last few years concerning missions. Give Pastor Kevin Clark a warm welcome, would you? Come on, brother. Good to see you. Thank you, Pastor Tim. Good morning, everybody. In case you don't know, today's a special day, and it's not my birthday. And it's, it's Sunday, of course, but today's National BGMC Day. And in case you don't know what that is, a lot of our people do. A lot of our even teenagers, because they grew up hearing this, Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge. And that's uh, something we are really big for around here with our kids, for everyone. But we teach our kids on this, not just today, but throughout the year. This is a big deal. In fact, everything they give on Sundays, uh, we use those buddy barrels. Some of you have seen those, those yellow barrels. They've been going on for years. And our, our kids love them. But everything they give on Sunday goes towards BGMC. In fact, it's an easier way for them to grab hold. Yeah, we want them, them to become givers. And we want them to do it because they love the Lord and do it out of faith and obedience as we ask God. And we remember that He's faithful this year. We are called to join with Him to be faithful, right? But um, everything they do goes towards our goal. In case you don't know, we've done pretty good the last four years. In 2018, uh, gave a total of $400, all good things. Uh, 2019, $1,107.65. We count every penny. Uh, in 2020, $2,017.71. And last year, $2,741.50. So we're very proud of our kids. They're not here, but let's give them a hand clap. In case you don't know, this something that's said in BGMC. For every dollar that's given, they figure this out. I guess it could change from year to year somewhat. They've equ equated that to being one life saved. Think about that for a second. BGMC covers a lot of things. It used to be just uh, material like curriculum, but now it's just about any need uh, the missionaries need. And it goes just about anywhere we go throughout the Simmons of God. You hear Convoy of Hope, and they're in the Ukraine. They're all over. Uh, yes, BGMC is going to be right there with them. And so what you do when you give to BGMC is you join in with the mission. But here's the deal with the, our kids. We want them to latch on, yes, being givers. And latch on not in the fundraising just attitude, but because we want them to learn to have compassion and, and do something now. So we pray for the missionaries, right? We do what we can do locally, and we, we do by giving. And we can't send our kids right now to Africa, but they can go in another way. So our goal every year is to up that game. So today, uh, we're celebrating upstairs with a little party because they've done a great job, and they're very excited. And so we're going to have some pizza, some cupcakes, and I'm going to get pied in the face. Somehow that happened, yeah. I mean, we're going to honor them every time. We're going to do something fun, right? And uh, so next year, if they get 3,000, if they hit that, I'll eat a goldfish. Yeah, they got to got to got to got to get the 3,000. They get 4,000, I'll color my hair. 5,000, I'll go bald. Yeah, you're going to have to earn that joker. Because I'm going to tell you, that's probably worse than the goldfish for me. I ain't going to lie. I eat, little baby goldfish. I'm not, never done it before. I'll eat it and throw up. That's just how it's going to go that day, but we'll do it for Jesus. I'm going to throw it for Jesus that day. There we go. So here's, here's why we're down here, okay? Uh, we love it up there with the kids. Love you guys. You don't see me a lot, but I want you to join in if you would. Right in your seat, you see a box. Uh, if, if you unfold it, it becomes a box anyway. And we're telling our kids that we're down here talking to you, telling them we got to get y'all lined up in obedience like them. I'm just saying, you know, y'all got to line up with them. Uh, but we would like for you to consider your change. See, it's not the amount, really, even though we want to keep on moving positively, right? Because really, is it really that? I mean, a widow's mite is how much? And for kids, a widow's mite can easily be a few pennies a Sunday, right? And it's about obedience, about passion, about doing something. And yes, prayer may be the only thing sometimes, but a lot of us in America can do more. So if it's that change that you agree to give that's in the bottom of your 
washer dryer, the change at the bottom of your purse, the change we find on the ground, whatever. Make a deal, if you would, of filling this, this box up for us, if you would. Bring it next Sunday. We'll have a place you can give it. And then we'll celebrate with the kids. And again, we'll talk about the mount, but that you joined in with us, and you're going to be part of that even though you're not in service with us, okay? So if you would think about ways you can give, we're not trying to, you know, you're giving lots of places. Our church does a great job at giving. We know that. But here's another way visually, too, that you can join in with the kids. And it is a big deal because we want you thinking with us and united with us in faith that we're doing something together. And we all unify here at the church doing different things, but it's all for the kingdom. Amen? So we want you, if you would, to find a way you can fill up that box. And we'll talk to you next week. We'll show you some pictures next week of the great event we're having upstairs. And uh, we know you're praying for our kids. And we're going to go back and tell them the good news that you're joining with us. And we're going to do this next week together. We'll collect your change and we'll celebrate it up there for you, okay? Thanks. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. Would you give our kids pastor a hand? Thanks, buddy. Love you, man. Thank you so much. David Green's mother would crochet little doilies in her chair and sell them for a dollar. She would do that over and over again. She would take the dollar and give it to world missions. David watched his mother do that year after year after year. What, what, um, how much does a dollar do, you know? It's just a dollar. She'd work and crochet at night and sell these little things for a buck. He watched that. David went on to be a businessman. Um, a very successful businessman. As a matter of fact, most of you have probably shopped at one of his Hobby Lobby stores. Today, David Green is worth about $4.5 billion. He is the largest evangelical benefactor on the planet. Has given hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to the kingdom. Now, how does that happen? How, how does that happen? That happens because... A young man watched someone model for him what it was to give. And now that he is uh, the recipient of much, he's a massive, massive giver. The, the biblical, um, um, li not the library, but the museum, the Bible Museum in Washington, D.C., that's them. And so the point of me saying that is this. We want to teach our sons and daughters how to be generous, how to be givers. And I appreciate you working with them because uh, this world has nothing to offer us in the end. We have heaven to gain. Amen? <laughs> amen. 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 I want you to reach to the seat next to you and grab something. Grab um, this card right here. It looks just like this. It's colorful. You can't miss it. It looks kind of like the color of the box. So maybe you can miss it. Maybe it's the same color. But grab it. I want you to hold on to it. And grab your Bibles and turn to Mark chapter 16. Mark 16. Mark 16. So hold these in your hand. Keep them tight. We'll come back to them in a minute. Mark 16. I want to talk to you about being faithful to the master's command. Being faithful to the master's command. Mark chapter 16. Put it up on the screen if you would. Here's what it says. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they didn't believe him. They didn't believe her. Afterwards, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. These returned and reported to the rest. But they did not believe them either. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for the lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. Everybody say, in my name. In my name, they will drive out demons. You could also say, in my name, they will speak a new tongue. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them. 
at all. They will place their hands on sick people, and the sick people will get well. After Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken into heaven, and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out, preached everywhere, and the Lord, look, worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. Can you grab your Bible and let's pray? Father, I thank you for your word today. It is a light unto our feet, a lamp unto our path. Lord, we need this more than we realize, God. We realize we need it, but more than we realize we need it. We need it. So I pray that you would speak to our hearts. Would you pray with me? God, open our hearts to receive what you would say to us. Open our minds to understand what it is that you're communicating. And God, help us to hear and respond. And God, we ask that you would release the gifts to us and through us. Release the gifts to us and through us so that we would be uh, followers of Jesus Christ, living and walking in faith, living and walking in the power of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Two weeks ago, uh, I had three one-word points, and you will hear those threaded three weeks ago, last week, and this week, and here are the words. Here, if I say here. Second word is respond, say respond. And the third one is release, if I say release. All right, hear, respond, release. Say it with me. Hear, respond, and release. One more time. Hear, respond, and release. We see this theme over and over and over in Scripture. It is, it is the call of heaven. Can you hear what the Spirit says? Can you, do you have the spiritual ears to understand, to hear what Christ is saying? What the Spirit of Christ is saying? And I would submit to you that Jesus has been saying the same things for over 2,000 years. He's been saying them again and again and again and again. For who will hear him will know. And so we see in this scripture this same theme repeated over and over again. Hear, uh, respond, and release. I want you to write this down. Number one, I will live like Jesus is alive. Come on. I will live like Jesus is alive. Do you know that Easter is um, in five Sundays? Easter's in five, is it five? I think it's five. Five Sundays is Easter. Four Sundays is Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday's in a month. Easter's in five weeks. And so uh, the reason I say that is because we're entering the season of a harvest. The harvest. People will be looking for someplace to celebrate, can I say this? Something. Come on. They, they are, are, the world is looking for for something to celebrate. Can I tell you, we've got the greatest thing in the universe to celebrate, that Jesus is alive. He's alive. And I, I, we need to live like he's alive. And so um, Palm Sunday, we're going to have like a family outreach. We're going to kind of hit it early, right? We're, go, we're going after Palm Sunday, and we're going to have uh, an egg hunt for the kids after the service. We'll have a, like a family day right after the service concludes. We're believing to pass out five to 6,000 invites, so you need to pray with us that those would work um, and that they would be received. And uh, we've been so um, blessed to have great relationships with many of our community schools, and we just want people to know there's a place that loves them, man, the place that loves them. So that's on Palm Sunday. And then guess what? Of course, they're welcome to come back for Easter. And so we're going to have some invite cards for you in a few days that you can use. Palm Sunday's in four weeks, Easter's in five weeks. We're moving into a season of harvest. I'll live like Jesus is alive. So in Mark 16, the Bible says, Jesus rose early the first day of the week, and he appears to Mary Magdalene. This, uh, Mark goes through um, really three appearances that Jesus made post-resurrection. He's been crucified, put in a tomb, and he's risen. In the order that Mark lists them, is in chronological order, is Mary Magdalene, then on the road to Emmaus, and then with the 11 while they're eating. The Bible says in John 20 that Mary ran to the tomb of Jesus. Now, who is this Mary? This Mary 
is the one out of whom Jesus had driven seven demons. So I just want you to understand how, how uh, uh, bound up she was. How, how in bondage she was. I mean, she was physically and mentally, spiritually in all kinds of bondage. And the Bible specifically mentions her by name and designates that as her, the one that Jesus drew, drove out seven demons. Listen, when the master has done a miracle in your life, come on, you are forever connected to him. You are forever connected to him. So we have this Mary Magdalene. The Bible says she goes to the tomb, and she's weeping over the tomb. She's in confusion, doesn't understand what's happening. She sees two angels in white seated where Jesus' body was. So she's in the tomb crying. She looks inside. There's these angels, uh, John tells us, one at the head and one at the foot. And they ask her this question. Here's the question. Some of you know it. Woman, why are you crying? Why are you crying? That's a good question, Mary. Why are you crying? Why are you crying, Mary? You're crying because you felt like Jesus has disappointed you. You're crying because you felt like Jesus maybe wasn't who he said he was. You're crying because your dreams and your aspirations, all you put, you're confused, you're depressed, you don't understand what's going on, and she's just a broken mess. She says to the angels, and I think that's a pretty cool statement, she says to the angels, she's talking to an angel. That's awesome. They've taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they've put him. She makes a leap in an assumption that he is actually dead, and the body's been moved. She turned around when this happened, and there's this man standing there. She thinks it's the gardener. She thinks it's the groundskeeper. The man, once again, says, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where, his, where he is. I'll, I'll go get him. I, I'll, I'll do that. I'll clean him up. I'll, just tell me where he is. Jesus says to her, Mary, time stood still. It occurs to her, this is the one who she had come to see. He calls her by name. He calls her by name, Mary. She turned, cries out, and tries to grab hold of him. He says, not yet. I haven't ascended the Father. Mary's fired up. She's pumped. Can you imagine her situation? Can you imagine where she'd come from? What she thought she had happened, and then the reality of what had happened. She began to understand. All these thoughts are going through her mind. She darts. She went from utter, utter, uh, 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 low depression to this exhilarated understanding and feeling that Jesus is alive. Everything's changed because Jesus is alive. Friend, everything's changed. She goes and tells everybody, and not a soul believes her. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, if you just saw what I saw, you wouldn't have talked like that. If you'd been where I've been, you wouldn't say that. She had seen him, and no one believes her. Then Mark tells us in the story that there was two others that saw Jesus. Now, you know probably the story of the road to Emmaus. They're walking along the road. The time frame is roughly about the same. Uh, we don't know who it is. Cleopas was one of them. There's another person, unidentified. People speculate, but it doesn't say in Luke. So they're talking with each other on this road about everything that had happened. They're, they're discuss, discussing. I can't believe that Jesus is gone. I can't believe he's gone. So this man walks up. To the two. He says, hey guys, we're kind of walking in the same direction. What are you talking about? What do you mean, what are we talking about? We're talking about what everybody's talking about. Like, you don't know what everybody's talking about? Don't you know what just happened to Jesus Christ? Nazareth? Don't you know? Don't you know? 
He was a prophet, power and word, uh, uh, and, and deed before God and all people. The chief priest handed him over. They crucified. Don't you know? Then we went to the tomb. Some of our pe- Mary went, and like he wasn't there. That's what we're talking about. Jesus responds, how foolish you are, and how slow to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer all these things to enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and the prophets, Jesus basically explains all the Old Testament to them in a summary form as they're walking. So they, they're like ready to crash for the night. Jesus is, they said, no, 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 stay with us, stay with us. He says, he sits at the table with them, he takes bread, and he breaks it. And the Bible says, and it began to give, it began to give it to them. Their eyes were open, and they recognized that it was Jesus. Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? So Mark says, look, Mary's testimony. Then you had the testimony of of the two, Cleopas and someone else. You didn't believe them. You didn't believe what they said. A couple things about unbelief. First of all, Jesus had told his followers what would happen. This is important. He had already told them. He had already told them. As a matter of fact, you can look it up in, I think, all the Gospels. Well, yes, all the Gospels, at least Luke, Matthew, Mark. He had already told them. Uh, uh, um, he, he, he says in, in Luke chapter 9, um, the Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed on the third day and be raised from the dead. In Matthew chapter 17, as they were gathering in Galilee, he said to them, the Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him. He will be raised on the third day. And the Bible says they were greatly distressed. That's interesting. Did they only hear half of what he said? He said, the Son of Man is about to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him. He will be raised on the third day. And they were greatly distressed. I don't understand what's so distressing about that. We read it now and we go, how is it distressing that he'll be raised up on the third day? Unbelief will cause you to hear only the things that you want to hear. And then Mark, uh, um, he began to teach them the Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise from the rise again. And he said this plainly. He's saying it and saying it and saying it. The first thing about unbelief is this. Jesus had already told him it would happen. The second thing is he expected those who had heard it said to believe it and respond. Now this is very significant to us in 2022. Jesus had said it. In addition to that, he had witnessed, he would allow Mary and the two on the road to Emmaus to witness his resurrection or his resurrected body. He had said it. He had told it to him. He had said it plainly, numerous times. He had appeared to them. Here's the takeaway. Jesus expects for his followers to live like he's alive. He expects for his followers to live like he's alive. Jesus expects that. The expectation of Jesus is what must direct us. The testimony of Jesus is what we're told to live by. Our lives are shaped by the testimony of Christ. So here's a question. Do you believe Jesus is alive? That's a very important question. And I'm not trying to be theoretical or funny. Do you believe that he's alive? Do you believe? He, he's not an a anime character. He's not a cartoon character. It's not a sci-fi movie. Do you believe that Jesus Christ was crucified and was resurrected from the dead? Do you believe that? If we believe that, that Jesus is alive, it changes everything, doesn't it? It changes everything. 
We don't have to be like Mary. We don't have to be like the two on the road to Emmaus. We don't have to be downtrodden, downcast, and confused, and I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Oh, what was it? We don't have to do that because that changes everything. Oh, listen, friend, I'm not planning on going tomorrow, but in just in a little while, I'm cashing in and checking out. Come on. I'm cashing in and checking out. Listen, I'm I'm halfway there at least. Uh, In the words of the prophet Bon Jovi, halfway there living on a prayer. I mean, I'm there. Just joking. I'm 52, 104, I guess that's possible. Uh, Maybe, probably not, but maybe. Come on, in just a little while, life is but a vapor. Life is but a vapor. Life is but a vapor. In just a little while. Some of you who are 17 never think you'll be 50. Oh, you deceiveth yourself. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. Romans 4.17 says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's this living of righteousness, living righteous before God, and the peace of God. Friend, if there's any time we need peace, it's now. Any time we need peace, it's now. Probably next week, we will give you an opportunity to participate in an effort that we will participate in to help the mass chaos in Europe. Can I encourage you that we have missionaries on the ground in Europe? Can I encourage you that we have churches that are alive and functioning? Can I encourage you that some of the arms that we support of the Assemblies of God are on the ground, working, helping, distributing hygiene, clean water, food, doing the best that they can. And we're working on a plan for us to participate both in a hands-on and a giving. A hands-on and giving, and both will be giving in nature, but we'll let you know that. Here's the point. We'll live like Jesus is alive. We'll live, we won't live like he's dead. We won't live with, without hope. Uh, live like Jesus is alive. Christ, God raised Jesus from the dead, and by the power of his spirit, he was resurrected. So we pray this morning that our faith would be strengthened, that we'd live like Christ has been raised from the dead, transformed uh, us in living by faith. We need the help of the Spirit to help us live like Jesus is alive. Changes everything. The second thing is this. I will live like Jesus has authority in my life. Now, this one's going to be a little edgier. A little little edge. Is that okay? Can I just say what Jesus said? Can we just do that? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I will live like Jesus has authority. I, I will allow Christ to have authority in my life. Um, here's a word that's not, a phrase that's not super popular anymore. But let me bring it back. Submission to authority. If Jesus, if Jesus is the one who has all authority. We talked about it last. All authority, heaven, all authority. Friend, he has authority over Europe. He has authority in Ukraine, in Russia, and Moscow. He has authority. I'm telling you, the puny kingdoms of men pale. They shrink and wither away under the power of God. He has authority. He's not relinquished that authority. He's in charge. Christ has been given all authority. And if Jesus has all authority, it would behoove me and you to allow him to recognize him as the authority in my life. Now this... This changes everything. Well, there's two things that change everything, right? Jesus is alive. What will we do with that? Will we allow him to have authority? Mark 16, 14, back to the story, says this. Later, Jesus appeared to the 11 as they were eating. All right, so Mary Magdalene, right? Um, Road to Emmaus. And they're having like a um, dinner party. They're afraid. They're trying to figure out what's going on. So he shows up at the dinner party. And as they were eating, he um, lays into them. He lays into them. That, uh, that word rebuke is, is, is really a colorful word. If you have, um, it might be ESV. I know King James says upbraided. You know what that is? You ever been upbraided? <laughs> You ever been set straight? You're, you're, 
been upbraided. He rebukes them. He, now, here's what he didn't do. Now, now, boys, quiet down. Jesus is trying to talk. You in the back, shh, 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 shh. Just, if you'll give me just a moment, please. I, I, there's a few things from my heart I'd like to share because I'm Jesus, and I need to share. No, 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 no. He rebuked him. How dare you? I told you this would happen. I told you this would happen. He rebuked them for the lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen. And I even appeared to Mary. I appeared to her, call her by name. I appeared to those guys on the road to Emmaus. You knew it, they told you, and you still didn't believe them. I told you I would rise again. I appeared to them, and they gave testimony. Now that's three testimonies, mine and theirs, and you still didn't believe. Now why is he being so hard on? Why is Jesus, I mean, let's, let's, their earth was, sh- their world was shattered. They, 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 they were confused. They, 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 they didn't understand. They were fearful. They, they, they thought the world was coming. Well, at least the world as they perceived it was coming to an end. And, and Jesus, instead of coming in, says, now, 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 come on. He rebukes them. He lays into them. What are they rebuked for? Their lack of faith. Now this is really important. They are not rebuked for their lack of talent. Hallelujah to Jesus. (laughs) They were not rebuked for their inability to be a good talker. (laughs) They are not rebuked. Listen, they are not rebuked right here for breaking one of the visible, you know, earthly commandments. They are rebuked for their lack of faith. Why is Jesus laying into them so hard about this? Because faith is the commodity of heaven. We get saved because of our faith and what Jesus has done. We follow Christ because of our faith. We obey the commands of Christ because of our faith. Faith is a commodity of heaven. As a matter of fact, the biggest thing that Jesus was concerned about right then was their faith. Faith is the building block for which everything in the kingdom is built. Faith is the precursor to all that happens in the kingdom of God. Hebrews 11.6 says this, Without faith, finish it with me, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Without faith, it's impossible. Without faith, it's impossible. He rebukes them because the thing that they lacked was the thing that was necessary for them to live with him forever. And if they didn't have that, nothing else would suffice. The Spirit of Christ is working on your faith. Do you believe that? Do you, do you sense it this morning? The Spirit of Christ is working on your faith. He's working on your faith right now. Right now, He's working on your faith. The Spirit of Christ is working on your faith. He's right now, right now, He's working on your faith. In the season that you're in, He's working on your faith. In your physical condition, he's working on your faith. In, 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 in whatever joy or crisis, he's working on your faith. Because faith is the only thing that makes us acceptable to the master. It's the only thing that makes us acceptable to As a matter of fact, in fact without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe. Believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Now, Luke tells a story. He elaborates on the interaction that Jesus has with his disciples. In one instance, you, you, when he approaches... Um, um, 
Thomas, Doubting Thomas. Thomas, Thomas, poor Thomas, Doubting Thomas. God bless you. When your first name's Doubting and your last name's Thomas, that's a bad rap, isn't it? Doubting Thomas. <laughs> he, he's with them, and he walks in the room. They're talking about everything. He just, walk, he just appears. He says, peace. But they were startled and they're frightened, and they thought they were seeing a spirit. Why are you troubled, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Then, what does he do? He extends his hands and his side. In their doubt, he invites them close. Now listen, the enemy will try to create a wedge when doubts come in to separate you. Jesus draws close and says, come on, touch my hands. Feel that? Those were the hands. You, you saw right. You saw right. See this? You remember that? Remember that Roman spear? That's it. Right there. T Thomas, touch that. Touch. See where they pierce me? Even in our lack, Jesus pursues us and pursues us and pursues us and pursues us. And says, come on and touch me. I'm accessible. I'm available. I want you to come in. And so if you're here today, maybe you're hearing this, and you say to yourself, well, I um, guess I'm all washed up because I don't know if my faith is really where it needs to be. What I would say to you is that Jesus is saying, come on, C come close, don't, don't run, don't go away. He appears to them. He pursued them. He showed up apparently uninvited. <laughs> they didn't know to invite him. They didn't think about inviting him. He was gone. He shows up uninvited and makes himself available. We see the master again and again and again pursuing, 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 pursuing. Here's the point. He's pursuing you. He's pursuing you. He's pursuing you. And he's after your faith. You will receive correction from someone who you perceive has authority in your life. All right. If someone tries to correct you, and you're like, who are you? Someone tries to give you a tip or a pointer. It's being nice about it now, right? <laughs> Some free advice. You, you say, who are you? There's times where I'll say, um, if I want to interject something, I'll ask permission. Are, are, you, um, are you game for some free unsolicited advice? <laughs> You'll receive correction. You'll receive it, right, from someone that you perceive has authority in your life. You ever played a sport? Coach? Perceived authority. I Perceive you have authority in my life. Therefore, when I am upbraided for my lack of effort or whatever, I receive that because I know you have my intentions, good intentions, right? A coach, um, a loving parent, a loving parent will, will correct, will, will, will um, correct. And, and it will be received only if the relationship feels that there's authority there. If they don't, then it's not going to work. Or a friend. You ever had a trusted friend who brought some correction maybe? You perceived they had authority. Or a mentor. Here's the point. If you don't let someone in your life and give them any authority, they can say anything they want, but it won't be received. What we have to do is come to Jesus and say, Jesus, you're the master. You have all authority. Now it becomes about my submission to that authority. He already has authority. One day, those who don't submit to that, the Bible says, will eventually bow a knee in confession and realization, a cognitive understanding. I missed the mark. Jesus is Lord. But right now, it's my faith. The Spirit is after your faith. He wants to strengthen your faith. That's why worship is important. That's why gathering is important. That's why, listen, that's why giving is important. Where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Uh, that's why praying is important. 
That's why serving is important. I will live like Jesus has authority in my life. Jesus is the head of all things. Christ, the risen one, has all authority. The Father, the Bible is clear, has given Christ complete authority. Everything is under his feet. Everything and everyone are subject to the authority of Jesus. So I've been praying for a couple weeks for the Lord to strengthen our faith, to, to grasp that reality that he is Lord of the universe. He's Lord of the world and he is head of the church. So strengthen us. We pray, that's what we need. I'll live like Jesus is alive. I'll live like Jesus has authority in my life. And the third thing I want you to write down is this. I will represent Jesus with confidence. With confidence. With confidence. Go back to Mark 16. Let's read it again. Or at least verse um, 15. So he rebukes them. Now this is, this is significant. He rebukes them. And right away, what does he do? He gives them the most outlandish mission that anyone could ever receive. He gives them a task of monumental proportions. He gives them a vision of the world and a future and a life's calling. He rebukes them for the lack of faith. And now he says, now, straighten up. I got something to tell you. Go. Then skip a beat. He says, go. Go into all of the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Go and do that. I don't come just to condemn you. I come to strengthen your faith. Now repent of your lack of faith because you're going to need to go. And, by the way, whoever believes what you say will go to heaven. Whoever does not believe what you say will burn in hell for eternity. And these signs will accompany those who believe. Drive out demons. You, you guys are going to see it. You'll see it. We are, you are, but you're going to do it. They'll speak in new tongues. They'll pick up snakes with their hands. They'll drink deadly poison. It won't hurt them at all. They'll place their hands on sick people, and they'll get well. Let me just unpack that for a minute, just to bring some clarity. There will be times in gospel ministry where you will encounter deadly things that will not harm you. This is not a license to go find a bunch of poisonous snakes and yank them by the tail and start kissing on them. That is not at all, not at all what Jesus meant. Now, some of you have friends that think that's what you do. I'm just telling you right now. Because they think you're going over, they, they think. That is not at all. That is a, a complete misrepresentation of that scripture. That is not at all what it means. But there will be times uh, um, that this will happen. There'll be, there'll be dangerous things. There'll be things that should have hurt you or should have killed you that won't. You, you'll encounter spir dark spiritual forces. And you'll be strengthened to overcome them. I will confirm what you say is from heaven with miracles and signs and wonders. Wherever the gospel is preached there will be a trail of the supernatural left behind. Wherever the gospel message is preached, behind it is this trail of life-changing, conversion, uh, miracles, signs and wonders, unexplainable things. I'll represent Jesus with confidence. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. There, there's a beautiful heaven beginning. You'll be saved. Saved from what? Saved from yourself. Saved from punishment. Saved from hell. Saved, saved from everything that would have hurt you. You'll be saved. Heaven to gain. Heaven's a real place. It's okay to talk about heaven. We should talk about heaven more often. Heaven's a real place. Uh, that, 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 that the building blocks of heaven are, are considered precious material on this earth and they're in excess. 
Uh, um, there, it's, it's beyond even, you can see the biblical writers struggling to describe what they see. They're, they're, they're constrained with, 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 with words that, that seem so little in compared to what they see. It's a wonderful place. It's for eternity. It's a real place. When a believer dies, they inherit eternal life. Whoever believes what you say to them, he says and is baptized, obedience always follows repentance. Always follows repentance. We receive eternal life. That should motivate you. That should motivate you. And if that doesn't motivate you enough, if they don't believe, they will be condemned. I'm putting a message in your mouth. If it's believed, it'll be transformational power to the hearer. If it's not believed, They'll be condemned. Now, now that, that seems like a lot from just a few minutes ago getting upbraided. I, I, I know I keep using these sideline illustrations, but can't, can't you see this coach? Grabbing a player by the face mask? I told you, when that guy breaks out, block him out. Push him to the sideline. Push him to the top of the stadium. He gets by you one more time, you're on the bench. Do you understand me? Push him to the top of that stadium. Now go out there and win this game. So it's this upbraiding, and it's right away. It's this world-changing mission. Go and preach the gospel at all creation. Who am I supposed to? Everybody. What about them? Yep. What about them? Yep. If they believe, they go to hell. And if they don't, they go to hell. Here's a question. Jesus said this. Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Here's a question to ask ourselves. If we aren't fishing, are we really following? If we're called, if I'm called to be a fisher of men and... Jesus said, if, I fo- if you follow me, come on, Tim, follow me. Do you hear him saying that to you? Come on, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Oh, that was just for the guys in the boat. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It's for everyone who follows. I'll make you fishers of men. So here's a question. If I'm not fishing, am I truly following? I think that's a serious question. I want you to grab your cards real quick. Jesus said, let me encourage your faith. When you do this, you're going to drive out some demons. It's going to happen. Um, you're, going to, you're going to speak in new tongues. Y'all are going to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Things are going to happen. Um, you're going to face incredible, deadly things. Not going to harm you. You'll encounter sick people who need, the doctors can do nothing else. And you will show up. And in my name, you'll lay hands on them, and they will recover as a testimony to my resurrection power. Here, here's the missions. Here, 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 here's what Life Church is about. Here's what Life Church does. Life Church is a sending group of Christ followers, number one. We're a sending group. We give so that others can go. You heard Pastor Kevin, what he said, right? We're a sending group. We're a sending group of Christ followers. So we send people out. When you give to missions, you're, you're sending. We hear reports, right? Reports from those missionaries. Reports from those missionaries. We're a sending group. We send people. We can't go everywhere. Not, not at the same time. Not in this room. But we send people who are. The second thing is Life Church is a loving and welcoming group of Christ followers. So we create this Christ-filled atmosphere so that others can look, look, connect, join, be part of. So we're charged with sending. Do you believe that? I believe that. We're we're charged with creating them and welcoming environments so that others can connect. Others can connect. And the third thing, Life Church is a gathering and inviting group of Christ followers. We connect to the community. 
so that others can hear and believe. Hear and believe. Hear and believe. There's times, and I'm sure that you're like this too. You come to moments like this, and you go, God, just, oh, you got to help me. You got, what, what if Jesus walked in the room? Can you picture him talking to us? Repent of your lack of faith. Now go. 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 If they believe you, if you're, if they believe what you say, they'll receive an eternal life. We might want to think about how, how we say and what we say. Just a thought there. Because if they believe it and it's right, if they don't believe, they'll be condemned. That tells me that when I witness, when I speak, there'll be some that will believe. And it will be a beautiful thing. And it will be like fuel on the, on the fire. There will be times where there's unbelief. And it will be hard and heavy and difficult. But Jesus said, go. Drive out demons. Lay hands on the sick. Preach the gospel. I want you to hold these in mind. I created something to help. I want you to, I want you to stick with me here. Mine's blank because I'm still holding on to one from last year. <laughs> what do we do about what we just heard? What do we do? You're here because you want to be here. You want to be here. We're worshiping, we're worshiping Christ together. How do we fulfill what Jesus says? Let me give you some thoughts. We know people within driving distance of this church who are not in church. If you don't know people who are in driving distance of this church, who don't have a church, what I hear from this is I need to get to know somebody. The longer I do this, the more insulated or isolated I can become unless I intentionally, especially the last 26 months or whatever it's been, where it was like, stay away, stay away, stay away. And like, you know, especially that. What I'm asking you to do is, is to ask the Lord for five names. Now, I got a card in my office, and some of it has like a full name. And some of it has the guy at so-and-so, right? The, uh, um, the lady or the couple so-and-so. And I didn't know. And I'm, I'm just, Lord, they're on the radar. I, I'm going to be praying for them. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to put five names. It could be someone in your household. Across the street, a co-worker. And I want you to hear Jesus burden for them asking you to pray. And I want you just to pray for them. I, and I want you to pray for them all year. All year. All year. All year. But you're praying. You're praying. You're praying. You're praying. Then, I want you to consider this. Look for opportunity to serve them with an unexpected kind gesture, random act of kindness, something meaningful, something, anything, something kind, to serve them. To, it's, it's a way of washing Jesus' feet, serving them. You, got, you have a cup of cold water, you've done it unto me. You, it's just serving. You're serving. And ask. What are you asking? Well, what I hope is that as we mature in our faith and we grow, we, we know how to share our story. But what I'm asking you for here is just ask them to join you at one of our services. And I think Palm Sunday and Easter 
are the perfect time. What do you? What do you think? I think so. I'll live like Jesus is alive. Come on, he's alive. I will um, live like he has authority in my life. And I'll represent him with, with confidence. With confidence. Remember what the, the, the disciples were rebuked for. Not because they didn't, hadn't memorized enough of the Torah. They were rebuked for their lack of faith. It's about a complete surrender. Are, we, are, are you with me? Would you stand up on your feet? It's about a complete surrender. Stand up on your feet, all of us. It's about a complete surrender. It's about a surrendering, look, listen, of what I want. It's about a surrendering of my will. It's about a surrendering of my comfort level. It's about a surrendering of my desire. We're a sending group. We're a welcoming group. And, 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 a, and a gathering group. We've got to do all. We've got to do all of it. We send, right? Where others go that we can't. We, we create atmosphere, love, and ex- where people are welcome, right? To come in with, with their flaws. And you can say, I got some flaws too, man. You know, and so we're kind of kind of in that one together, kind of flawed together. But there's one that we're chasing and pursuing who loves us more than you can imagine, and he's flawless. And if we'll just kind of stick close to him, what's going to happen is he's going to knock some of those rough edges off of us together. And, and maybe I would be transparent enough to share some of those flaws with you. And you could maybe, if you would trust me occasionally, if you ever got the guts to share a flaw or two, and then together we could just give those to Jesus. That's called making disciples. It's called making disciples. And uh, we're an inviting group. It's a beautiful and dreadful thing at the same time. If they believe, oh man, what if they don't? How will they know unless they hear? The answer is they won't. Would you help me in letting, letting them hear? Would you help me in that? Would you help me in letting them hear? Would you, would you, would you pray that we would be uh, uh, more of a gathering group? Are, you, are we together? Are we, I'm not setting you up for some, you know, big, like, this is what it is. Would you, would, would, would you, would you, could we work together to be a gathering group? That we would, in, can I tell you that when you begin to pray for someone, things happen. Things happen, and the Spirit will speak to you, and God will do things behind the scenes because He's He's the one who's pursuing. He's the one who pursuing. He's the one who, who He's the one who died and rose from the dead, and that same power is alive in us. So the response today is this: God, I surrender completely to you. Is that where you're at? Will you go there with me? God, I surrender completely to you. Would you close your eyes right now and just begin? God, we, we surrender to you. God, we, we surrender to you. We surrender to you, Jesus. We surrender to you. Lord, we, we thank you. We praise you. You're the one that's in, in authority. That you created. Come on, would you worship him? We praise you that you're the one that created. You're, 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 the, you're the one that has all authority on the earth. In the universe and in the church. This is your church, Jesus. God, I pray that you would strengthen our faith. 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 To believe that you are who you said you are. Would you pray right now? Would you ask God to show you who the people that he would have you work with him on this year would, would you pray can you will you do that with me will you do that can we pray right now together Jesus
Give us surrendered hearts. In this atmosphere, I want to back up a couple steps here. The Lord is working on some things right now in this room about surrender. The Lord is working on some areas of our life that we haven't surrendered. Maybe we've said it, but we haven't responded. Right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask, this is important, that we would respond to the call of God for surrender. That we'd respond to the call of God for surrender. that's you right there in your seat would you just throw your hands up say God I surrender I surrender to you I surrender to you I surrender to you I surrender to you we're going to sing an old song I surrender all we're going to sing that and as we do I just want you to lay your life before the master and ask and ask that, that, he would, that he would help you surrender every part. Come on, maybe you're here today and you've been giving some, but you've been holding back. These altars are open. You can respond by coming forward. You can respond by kneeling in your seat. You can respond by standing in your chair. Just respond in some way. Respond in some way. God, we surrender. We surrender. Can we let that prayer wash over us as we sing this song together? Come on, sing it with us as we sing. Sing to the master, sing it to Surrendering to the Master. Can you hear what the Spirit is saying? Can you hear the Master's call to love His children? Can you hear it? Can you can you sense? Go ahead and push back your inhibitions, or I don't know how to do it. Just push that back. Can you sense that? Can you feel that? Can you hear that? The Master is His heart is breaking for this community. And he's trusted you with them. His heart is breaking for the kids of this community. And he's trusting us with them. His heart is breaking for young adults and single adults and married couples. His, uh, the, divorced and widowed, uh, 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 married, widowers. He's, and he's trusting us with them. We 
approach him with surrender. Say, Master, you're in charge. Now, would you show me who it is that is in my sphere that you're working on so you can work, so I can work with you? Because I want to work with you, Jesus. I want to work with you. I'm going to ask you to sing that again. And I want you to grab the pen and the seat back in front of you. Right now. Grab your card. As we sing that song, I'm believing, I'm believing that God is going to give you names or faces. Or sometimes he'll, you'll have this gap and you'll say, God, who is it? I, you gotta, you gotta I, I mean... Are they within the driving distance of this church and they're not in church? They're not in church. They're not in church. They're in driving distance of this church. They're not in church. And if you come up with nobody, what I think the master would say is, I want to show you somebody. Right? What, do you agree with that? Or do you agree? I think so. I think so. I think so. That lady at the checkout counter, that, that server at, at the wings place, the guy who's taking care of you, bringing, fix, fixing your drink and bringing the wings out. The, 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 uh, uh, the male person, or you fill it in. The person that works across the hall from me, or my employee, or my employer, or somebody. God will show them to you. And you will pray for them. You will pray for them. So we're going to sing that again. As they sing, I want you to listen to the voice of the Lord, and I want you to begin to write. Can you do that? Can we do that? You know, the church grows. The only way the church grows is, is through first time guests. That's the only way it grows, through first time guests. We're going to sing that again. We're going to ask the Lord to show us. Can we do that? Sing it again and let's pray. people that are on your list and pray probably for some of the blanks that might be there and you're saying God I, I I'm open can we can we pray right now can we do that can we do that right now father we come to you and you said that we would we should pray for our uh, for the laws you said that we should pray for the world and so God we're asking now God for the people that are on our list God that you would Go ahead and begin to soften their heart. 
Go ahead and begin to work on them. Come on, pray. God, work on them. Soften their heart towards the things of God. Soften their heart, O oh Lord. Show them. Show them how much you love them. Re show them how much you love them, God. Lord, prepare them. I pray that you would churn up hard places of their heart. Soften their heart, Jesus. We pray. I pray for, we pray for receptivity. There would be a receiving, God. A receiving, a receiving, God, of, of words and kindness and acts and invites, God. And Lord, we pray, God, for surrender. We pray for surrendered hearts. God, in ourselves, surrendered hearts and boldness. Boldness in Jesus' name. Boldness in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel like I'm going to pray for the sick here. And um, kind of sensing the Spirit moving and directing some specific things. Our prayer team's coming. And if you're here today, and you've got um, neck or shoulder issues. Maybe it's on the right, maybe it's on your left. If that's you, we want to pray for you right now. And so we're going to lift you up. So if you're here today and you're sick in body and, and maybe there's pinched nerve or a messed up, I don't know, uh, bulging disc, I'm not sure, but I sense that we want to begin to pray for you and believe God for a supernatural touch in your body. Maybe you're here today, and you just need prayer in general. You're like, man, I just need God to help me on some stuff. We want to be praying with you right now, right? Or maybe you say, you know what? What I need to do is I need to move my heart closer to the Lord and, and really get in line with, with what he's saying uh, to me about this fishing expedition that he has us on. <laughs> that we would have surrendered hearts and boldness confidence that you have for us. So if you'll draw close to him, look, everything that you need is in his presence. Everything that you need is in his presence. So we're going to open up this time prayer. But I'm going to pray over you. And if you need to go, you'll be dismissed. Our ushers will be at the door to receive um, tithe and offering your connection cards. These are for you to keep. These are not to turn in. Those are for you to keep. I want you to keep them. And listen, listen, I want you to struggle with this a bit. A uh, little struggle, right? A little, little struggle. I want you to struggle with it. Jesus has no problem with us struggling a little bit on some stuff. He wants us to. He wants to bring us to a place so that we become uh, releasing agents, right? That's what he wants, right? And so it's okay to struggle with that and bring it to prayer. Would you commit to me to, to praying about this this week? Would you commit? I'm asking you to. I'm, I'm begging you to. I'm begging you to. I'm begging it to. Come on, we're doing it together. We're doing it together. We're going to do it together. Come on, we're going to do it together. Come on, we're going to do it together. So if you need prayer about that or anything else, um, we want to we wanna pray with you. It's on, I think it's on this side of your body. Maybe it's even an ear issue. I don't know. But I'm just sensing that, that God wants to touch your body physically. I'm going to pray prayer over you. You'll be dismissed if you want to come and receive prayer or just worship. You're welcome to do that. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So, Father, thank you for the word. Thank you that who the sun sets free is free indeed. I thank you, Jesus, that you have, you have a plan and a purpose for each of us. And I'm asking in the name of Jesus that you would supply everything that we need. I pray blessings over your people. I pray encouragement over your people. I pray boldness, God. Boldness and confidence in their faith. Boldness and confidence in their faith, Jesus. That you are who you said you are. God, that you'll do what you said you would do. And God, we can do what you've commanded us to do, God. So we ask that you would that you would anoint us and empower us and strengthen us to obey you fully, to surrender fully in the name of Jesus. Now confirm the gospel messages that we preach and we share and we give away with miracles, signs and wonders, trails of the supernatural left behind. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I serve.